Tom Panos, John McGrath, Troy Malcolm, our Million Dollar Agent podcast is coming to you today. Now people can see what luxurious <laughs> state of affairs we have. These, well, we actually, it is beautiful. We're very thankful for News Limited giving us yeah. the uh, office. But this is the real deal, right? This is it. A table, three bodies, a and recorder, and a dream. And a right dream. That's and a, a dream. <laughs> if you if if you build it, they will come. We don't know how many have how many have come, but we keep building. So guys, this is this is exciting because normally we're actually just talking through these things here, Troy. Yeah. Our sound engineer, uh, producer, uh, facilitator, every job. Troy does everything. Um, it's big but, budget. Big budget. <laughs> big budget. But but uh, Johnny, this is uh, our first time that we've actually uh, doing a full video of our. Uh, yep. A podcast which allows people I mean it's not do you when you're watching things I think sometimes watching and Gary V does it I notice he does an audio experience he does his podcast he produces as an audio and as a video so we thought we'd do something different well I think you got to try new stuff right because we've trialed I've uh, done a couple of them where we've gone to Facebook through yeah. your stream I think that's good and just trial new things and in fact I think the first topic today that we're going to be talking about is kind of the digital space mm. You know, whether you like it or not, the digital space is upon us, and you've got to work out: do you want to play in it or not? Actually, you can't. You, you can't work that out. You've got to be in the digital space, which is online stuff like our sponsors, REA, yeah, um, social media, the Gary V sort of stuff. So you've got to work out: you know, what are you going to do within that space? So I think that's going to be the topic, and it's a really important one right now. Okay, so um, John, I thought picking today's topic, which is becoming a real estate media company, is a very relevant topic to do at the moment because a few months ago we had Gary V uh, speak by video at the conference. A lot of people have left ARIC and they have gone like, we love execution, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, we love execution, but we were talking prior to the podcast that there seems to be a lot of the real estate industry that maybe have gone in and executed without the clear strategy in their mind and there is random, haphazard, unstructured content being flown on Insta, Facebook and let's examine it. What are the right things to be doing? How do you become a media company in the context of being seen by the community as being a good real estate girl or guy? Well, look, I think your first point's really important one, Tom. The fact that people have jumped in and done something is fantastic. So any comments that I and I suspect we might make that might sound critical of anything people are doing shouldn't be seen that way. You're in there, you've got to do it. The question is now is, is what's relevant? So who's your audience? What are the messages and, and uh, that they want? Unfortunately, I think some of the agents have seen it because really, let's face it, Facebook and Insta and YouTube, they're all people's personal TV channels, really. TV, they've got, everyone's got their own TV station now at very low cost. And I think that's a great thing if used properly, but I think there are some people that are kind of using it to kind of promote themselves in a fashion that I'm not sure is really going to be valuable for their customers. So I think you've got to start, Tom, by saying, yeah, why am I doing it? Who am I doing it for? Yep. And what messages, Troy, are interesting to them? Not what makes me look like a hero and you know what's going to make me feel good at the end of the day. What, what messages are relevant to that audience? And you know, clearly from real estate agents, the key audience is vendors, potential pipeline vendors. And I am amazed because, you know, not just digital, oh, sorry, not just video, but any digital time, you know, whenever I'm thinking of employing someone or going to meet a client or whatever, I go to their Facebook account or their Instagram and I kind of want to check them out to kind of see what they're about. And I am constantly amazed at the things people put up there, either thinking it's a good idea or not even thinking at all. Mm. And you know, this is now a digital mm. footprint forever. Yeah. And you start putting kind of photos and I see people, everyone seems to have this infatuation with being seen with alcohol in some kind of semi-comatose state. And look, I'm, okay, I'm at one end of the scale, I'm a, I'm a teetotaler, but putting that aside, I'm not sure why this whole addiction with kind of people in party mode and let's show our client base and everyone else that cares to look ourselves in kind of, you know, in a bad state on a Saturday, late on a Saturday night. So I think you've got to be so careful. So John, you, you, you are saying to me that you go through the process before you engage in a product or service or meet with someone. As a practice, you'll go in and do a quick assessment 100%. on what they're like. 100% Tom, and look, I'm not uh, personal as you guys both know. I don't have a personal Facebook account mm. that I use, but I have access to have a look. And mm. if I'm going to a client, or if I'm thinking of employing someone, 100% I look at LinkedIn, I look at Instagram, I look at Facebook, because I just want to have a look at, get to know them. You know, so I can do a better job and I can understand what's behind the surface. 
And like, I'm seriously, I, I'm, I'm scared for some people, the crazy stuff they do. So, well, well how much is too much, right? Because that's, that's the debate. Frequency. The frequency of it, because I always look at uh, some of the Asians that we see in our industry, and I follow quite a few of them, and I see a post every two seconds or multiple posts a day. They're doing an Instagram story. It's like the whole day of Saturday, and then they disappear. So the debate has always been how much is too much and what value are you adding to the client's experience? And, and where, Troy, do you cross over between value add and egocentric? Well, self-serving, right? So, so I, exactly. we've, we've debated so many times, not only at boot camp, but over this podcast about a photo in front of a signboard mm -hmm. saying another one sold over reserve. I don't think that adds any value unless Go, there's a story around it. So guys, you can tell the same story in a different way. I, I want to ask you this question. Affluence and looking like you're successful and living it up and looking like you're making a lot of money. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing when posting on social media? Bad. I think it's bad, and that's not to be critical, hopefully too critical of anyone that's doing it, because I think that they're not all necessarily doing it out of malintent. I think sometimes people just, they, they, they hear that people like dealing with successful people, so they're doing their version of that sometimes. Mm. And you know, there is definitely a grey line where kind of used to be business and personal. Now, Facebook and, and these Instagram, it's all, it's all one. Yeah. So it's not like most people nowadays have got one and one and one of the other, it's all you. So I, I think that, you know, does it, to, to dress in a nice outfit and turn up in a nice, clean, credible looking car and looking like you're doing quite well, I think that's totally appropriate. To kind of arrive in a Bentley or a Maserati and to kind of have shots every two minutes of, you know, kind of things that you might be doing in your personal time you know, on balconies with Verve Clico or something. It's just showing for me. Showing your watch off. And a lot of all that sort of stuff. People like showing. And, and I think it's, in a lot of ways, it's probably a bit, it's, in some instances, it's insecurity. People feel they want to um, show the, the, um, the, the success and, and what it manifests as. Um, I just think it's, it's a dangerous, and I, and I don't think many people really look at that, either clients or colleagues or even friends in a positive light. But we've, we've done it, all three of us. We, yeah. We've reviewed people over the time and gone, why did they do that? Mm -hmm. Like, so if we're doing it, our clients would be doing it, absolutely. Yeah. So you've got to... You've got well, it's to a naive try to think that anyone that calls you in to look at their property is not looking at probably all three, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. They are the leaders, absolutely. Ev everyone's doing it. And yeah, even Twitter and other stuff, but they would be the three key ones in a professional environment. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 to me, the um, thing that would confuse a, a, a vendor would be that if on your realestate.com profile page, it says that you're all community, all health fitness, all about Rotary. Your Facebook says that you drink a lot of alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, your real estate agent page that talks about how pumped and excited you are about serving the community. So there's this disconnect right. between your real life and what you're actually telling on realestate.com and on your agent website. But so inconsistency, yeah. Yeah. but also just a bad story. A friend of mine who taught me meditation, Tom, uh, his name's also Tom, you know, 30 years ago, and I had breakfast with him last week and, and we were talking about stuff and he was going into a big corporation because he, you know, he's mainly in the spiritual world but he does some corporate training too. And, he, and I said, what are you going to be telling these people? And he said, John, I'm going to be talking about communication. And I'm going to express that everything they do, every breath they take, every word they speak, every step they take, is, that's like a, s a song, isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sting. <laughs> every move you... <laughs> But he, whoa, he was saying, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> Sorry, it was one of my favourite songs. Can we edit that out? <laughs> no, anyway. But he was saying that Every they're all telling you a story. They're all telling a story. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, the same about the social media stuff. You might say, yeah, but I don't want people to, you know, judge me or what I do on a Saturday night. Well, guess what, dude? They're judging you on what you're doing on a Saturday night if you're going to put it in people's face. Yeah. yeah. So, like it or not, you've got to be thoughtful and aligned. Um, and you know, some people might say, well, take it or leave it. That's, that's fine. The reality is most people will leave it. Yeah. Can I uh, ask, you've told me alcohol, turn off. We know that you've got strong reasons for it as well. You've always been against alcohol, but regardless, it's pretty... No, no, I've been against excessive. Excessive alcohol. I mean, I don't drink. That's my personal choice. But I, I don't think people getting drunk under any circumstance is good. Yeah. For the community, for themselves, for their health, blah, blah, blah. So it's excessive. But you enjoy celebrations. 
Well, yeah, I, don't, birth, I don't drink, but, but, but I... Birthday dinners and things like that. If someone's taking a photo at a birthday dinner and it's not kind of sure. focused on alcohol or something like that... And, you I, know, you I, go I away for a long weekend and have a nice breakfast somewhere, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I'm not saying you can't do anything that's personal. I'm just saying whatever you do that's personal, realise people will judge it. Yeah. Right or wrong, they're going to judge it. Yeah. So if someone's watching this now or listening to it, as most uh, people are on this podcast are listening, what are some of the things that you'd think a real estate agent, girl or guy, should be posting? What are the things that have excited you when you've been flipping through Facebook or skimming down on Insta, things that attract you that you think, I like that? Uh, look, I think there's some obvious things you can do in terms of market commentary. Yeah, I just want to let you know what's been happening in Paddington in the last few weeks. We've had, you know, there's been 47 sales averaging this much and kind of doing little market reports. I think Do you prefer that, John, in text or in video when you're seeing uh, I think a blend of both is good. I, I, uh, I like videos. I find now I'll always default to a video over a text or over, or over uh, the written word because it's easy and more interesting. So I think market reports, I think uh, even, not, you don't want to overdo it, but sometimes little testimonials where a client just says, you know, Tom just did a fabulous job with our auction 10 minutes ago. It was fantastic. A few authentic words from the heart, really good. I think that's great. The rawness of them on an iPhone too sometimes is really, good. really good. I mean, you don't, don't get me wrong, we've got industry media pumping out this video here, but when you're at a property that's just been sold seven yeah. minutes ago, there's something raw and exciting. There, Tringali a, does it, doesn't there, it? There's a balance, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, we call on experts like industry media to come and shoot the house and our profiles in our best possible light. No word of a doubt that is the best platform to execute and, and get as, as far as possible with the, the reach. There is a rawness to doing that that comes across natural and I think really engages with Well, people the, like the, the authenticity, Troy, well, they don't do. they? As Absolutely. long as it's, you know, it can't be too shaky and too fuzzy, that's crazy. But, you know, I think, because you do your Sunday night rants from home. On an iPhone. Yeah. And I reckon they're fantastic. Uh, if anyone hasn't watched them, what time do you do them? Uh, 8.30. Just Sunday after night. 60 minutes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're, um, you, you don't pick strong competitors. <laughs> so, but I, I think that's great, and that, that gets a message across, and it's real, and you're there staring in the camera. In fact, you did one the other day. Was it from an airport or something? I yes. saw you do one. Yes. And I think that, 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 that's great, because that's kind of saying Tom's real. He's between flights. He's about to jump on a flight. He's speaking from the heart. I think that's got a whole series of good messages, just the, the, the context. Um, so I think, you know, little testimonials, um, market updates, um, or sure. just general insights, you know, guys, just want to let you know that I've just come out of a house that we sold, we styled it, it cost four and a half thousand dollars, you know, it took such and such, you know, only a, a week and it was really a value add. So little tips along the way is good. I, I love the start of a campaign. Ladies and guys, I've just listed an amazing house. I've got the documentation signed. It's going to go to market in the next 10 days. If you want to get a sneak peek, contact me today via well, social media. That's good. Media. I like, yeah. 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 So, I like and Tom Ferry, of course, a few years ago, yeah, Troy, he came out it. to Eric and, yeah. and he was really good about that. And in fact, he was, which is probably not something that I've done yet or, or I don't know whether I like it or not, but he was talking about, you know, after you've been to a listing, like in the car and saying, hey, Troy, it's, it's Tom, you know, it was great to meet you a few minutes ago. Just want to let you know, here's what I'm going to do next. And I'm really excited So a about video it. message to the vendors that you've just visited. Yeah, like instead of a sales submission the next day, it was a 30 or 60 second video, half an hour later, saying it's fantastic, I've been thinking about it. As, as I drove back to the office, I thought of this, this and this and I'm going to come back to you with some more ideas tomorrow. But it was I like that. So it's, it's setting yeah. it aside, right? Yeah. And Gary Vee does those kind of things. So look, I don't think you've got to spend an enormous amount of time or effort. It's selecting the right moments. And I agree with you, Troy. I think you can do not enough and you can do too much. Yeah. Um, so I think you've got to find the right rhythm, um, definitely find the right content and the right tonality. And just who are you? Who do you stand for? If you stand for integrity and excellence and health and community and what, whatever your values, just make sure everything's aligned with that. Yep. And as you say, Tom, you can't say, well, you know, I'm all about you know, healthy living and looking after the environment. And then you put you know, images on Facebook of you, you know, tanked up on a Saturday night and yep. whatever. It's just inconsistent with, you know, with who you are, hopefully, and, and who you want to portray yourself as. And also, don't be someone that you've seen. Like, don't be Gary V. Yeah. Gary V is Gary V because he's acting, he's playing out himself. Yeah. Tom Panos is Tom Panos because he's playing out himself on a Sunday night rant. Don't try and be that someone that doesn't align with what you stand for. Right? So, so, so the most important thing is you want people to engage with you. But as you can person. learn from the others. You, no, you can I see would, what Tom does. You can yeah. see what Gary you have does. To, uh, you have to learn because these guys are doing it and they're getting the traction and getting the results. Have you guys seen Josh Hart on video? Yes. He's yeah. like, if, you, if any of our viewers listen. Yes. 
you got to see Josh. He's a great guy. He spoke. Uh, he spoke at Eric on day, day day two. He when, was. Um, he he Matt was, Fox couldn't. Correct. Couldn't do it, and he uh, stepped in very late, which we appreciate. And but Josh, I hope Maddie's young Marty. babe. Yes, Marty, Marty, sorry, yeah, Marty's young uh, baby. Yeah. Yep. But the Shout balance, out, Martin. The, the, the balance <laughs> of the balance of Josh doing professional video and real Instagram stories as well is perfect. Sorry, right. I know another Matthew Fox. So yeah. Sorry, Marty. That's right. Um, so, so, yeah. so, look, the thing, the thing that I have noticed about um, Josh Hart, and he summarised it very well, is he said, Tom, if you can get people connected on um, Insta Story and you're posting three or four times a day on Insta Story, quick 10 seconds, and you're actually showing them that you're working really hard. What actually happens is, in three months time, when they're actually face to face with you, they actually know that you are working hard. They actually, you, you've actually sort of been jabbing away at the presentation before the presentation. Yeah. Um, and I think that the biggest difference that real estate agents need to understand is, number one is, who is the audience? Mm -hmm. And try and think like your audience. Don't be posting ego-driven stuff that is going to make you look better than your competitor, yeah. which I think sometimes happens. And I think there is definitely room, Tom, for getting your personality beyond. And, and Matty Steinway does some really good posts. Yeah. So, you know, Matty does some stuff early morning in the beach at 6 a.m. He's about to go for a surf and he'll talk about balance. And he'll say, you know, because he, he's got a big following with agents. And if you haven't watched Matt or follow him, you should follow him on all the various things because he's... He's got a great story, and he's one of the best agents on planet Earth, without without uh, any doubt. But yeah, you know, he I think he kind of does a pretty good job of bringing in some personal stuff, and, I, and he'll, I'll often see one where he's driving home at night, end of a long day, it's eight o'clock, and he'll talk about burnout or you know, do you ever feel really tired? Guess what? So do I. But here's how I fix it. So I think yeah. he's got some I'll t good I'll, tips. I'll give you a big learning I've learned in social um, myself is when I would get Susan to post. Mm -hmm. It just didn't have the engagement. And I've learned that somehow the marketplace can tell whether you've done it. So give me an example of an when example you got it. Is, so you did so, the so I I so what Susan had done is she's heard me say something right. and what she does is she creates a post, she goes onto so an written, app called Word Swag. Written. Yeah. So for instance, John, she might write down you know what you know, but do you do what you know? Right, and right. that's got Tom Panos. And because it's actually been done not at the right time. There's been no context to it, right? It's been sent at a random time. It doesn't seem to get the engagement mm -hmm. of something that I would actually post, mm -hmm. that I would think. And it goes to me to show that social media is very much about authenticity. That you yeah. actually, if you don't say it at the right time, the way you'd say it, the marketplace seems to understand. And, and even the nuance, because you know, obviously she's heard you say something, and, but a word or a bit of energy. I mean, I know I do emails in a certain way. Yep. And you know, I, I do all my own emails and I bang them out and I kind of put you know, exclamation marks and dot dot dots and you know, page uh, line breaks and stuff. And, and it's the way I'm thinking, as though I'm sitting here and talking, idea, next line. Yep. And I think people pick up on that. Whereas yeah. if I dictated that to Tempe, or I think you're right, people would pick up a slightly so different so, message. So John, picture on a eight o'clock on a Saturday night, you don't have a, te uh, a, a post that says hustle and grind. Because I think people know that that's not the time that you should be Yeah, it's a Monday morning similar, post. Yeah. Similar to that, you don't do an auction from the weekend and post it on a Wednesday. Correct. Right? Because I mean, that speed is the new currency. You've got to make it relevant which to the situation is what, you're in. Which is why, and, and, and maybe one other thing before we finish off, because I think we've covered the subject world, is um, I can't get over the speed of Facebook is really putting their prices up. Um, in the world of social media, what they do is they halve your audience. So they don't, you, you don't notice it, but, and Facebook is doing it very, very quickly. They're giving you less and less of an audience, which means they want you to spend more money mm. to get that audience. Um, yeah. What's your view on spending money on social media platforms now? I mean, because... It, it feels for me, Tom, and I'm not expert in this, but I hear a lot of experts speak. It feels for me that an investment is warranted because it's becoming now such an important space to be in. But it also feels to me, I mean, I was speaking to a guy the, the other week and he's a fantastic agent and a good friend of mine, but he's spending six grand a month on social media. Now, you know, the guy's writing a couple of million bucks, so you might say that's relevant, but I've heard of different people getting better results for a quarter of that spend mm. because they've kind of whatever. So I think 
it's not just about money, it's, it's the way you spend the money and the quality of the content. I think it's a few different things combined. Troy, you're better than me to speak on this. But I guess my overall message is I think an investment's warranted, but no need to overspend, just spend judiciously invest in you know, those things. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Um, you need to be aware of your demographic that you're trying to engage with, right? Mm -hmm. Not putting $200 or $500 on a sponsored real estate property video and thinking that getting 3,000 views in the Facebook scroll, you're going to get a buyer. But if you target people that you know are going to engage and then contact you, that's the result. How do you do that? For. Um, in the back end of Facebook, there's right. metrics that you can change. So, um, so you don't need males, an agency, females. you just go in and... You can, listen, there's a lot of agencies out there that are doing it now. I don't believe you necessarily need to have an agency. So where would someone out. that's listening to us now learn that skill? YouTube. Go to YouTube, go to YouTube and YouTube. punch in what? Um, how to sponsor a post on Facebook. Right. Yep. Or how to target a demographic on Facebook. I hear that's that targeting and retargeting yep. very important. Someone said to me the other day, it was last night, I forget the context, I don't think you were with me, Troy, but they said, um, oh God, I see you every, every time I open up Facebook now, because obviously they must have looked at a property by this person mm -hmm. and something alerted Facebook mm -hmm. to then start following it. They said, every time I'm opening up a post, I'm seeing, actually one of our agents, I was coaching them and one of our sales managers was with us, and he said, I'm seeing you everywhere. So that was clearly retargeting and, yep. and following. But also, you've got to be careful with that, right? Because you're just as likely, if you get too frequent in front of someone, they're going to disengage, like Tom was saying. Spam. Yeah. Right. They're going to see it as spam, which is what we're seeing in email marketing, right? Yeah. So all the email marketing, everyone, every single agent in the country is now sending out property alerts for every single property. But mm. you need to be specific about what you're targeting and who you're targeting. Well, Tom right? talked before about frequency, and I think it's really important, you know, how much is not enough, how much is too much. Both yeah. are equally dangerous. You don't have any presence online now, you're going to be in trouble. You have too much presence, you're going to look like a pest mm -hmm. and like a spam. So, yeah, really interesting. Um, maybe next post or another one. I had recently, I test drove a Tesla car. Yeah. You know, wow. Elon, Elon and Musk. I was talking about that with someone yesterday and they said, um, if you had 150 grand now, what car would you buy? And he gave me five options, and I said, I'd look at a Tesla, they look good. What, so tell me, tell me, how Just did this come about? Just briefly finish Look, uh, I was in a meeting in the city in Martin Place. I walked out, I saw the Tesla showroom. I'm intrigued by the whole story behind Musk and Tesla. And I walked in, I thought I'll, I'll get the experience. Very professional, guy walks up to me, he's got the iPad. And he says, can I introduce myself? And he says, are you just having a browse? Or are you? And I said, well, I'm kind of half interested, but probably having more of a look. And he said, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? And he said, you know, what are you driving currently? You know, how long you had it? And he asked me some really good qualifying questions. And I was very, I wasn't offended by the fact that he was asking me questions and I had an iPad. I thought that was very professional. And the last question was, well, you know, would you be interested in us discussing a test drive with you? And I said, well, okay, why not? So anyway, he hits a button and then, you know, later that afternoon I get an email from someone saying, we understand you're interested, we'll come out and give you one, which they did the following week. So firstly, I mean, beautiful car, by the way, a stunning car, expensive, but beautiful. Um, very professional follow through, a good set of questions, which we always talk about in listing mm -hmm. presentations. Too many agents are winging it. Yep. Coming in, chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. You've got to ask questions that are taking you somewhere and taking the client on a journey. Um, and this guy came out to me, a guy called Will, who's brilliant, lovely guy and brilliant. And he came out, he brought the car out and we went for a half hour kind of drive. And that what, what someone asked me at a coaching session this morning, what, what was the impression? I said, well, number one, when I met the guy, he fit totally with, with the, the whole car brand. and the brand. Yeah. Beautifully dressed, very calm, not pushy, extremely professional. He was a little more like a meditation teacher than a salesman, but, it, but in a very professional way. So that was good, so it kind of it fit, it fit what I expected. He said, look, I know you're very, very busy, um, so what I'll do is I'll just tell you four or five key things and then the rest of the stuff you can let me know when you're ready to learn more, but I'll tell you four or five really interesting things about the car. So he focused in on, he made it easy for me to quick snapshot. He could have taken me whole through the car and, and half an hour later I'd have been bored. He said, let me tell you about this, this, this and this, which was really interesting. Then we went for the drive and I was talking to him along the way, not just about the car, but I asked him what was his background. And I said to him, yeah, so why do you work at Tesla? He said, because of Musk, Elon Musk. I said, have you met him? He said, no. He said, I've read his book. He said, I'm going overseas to a conference next week to meet him, but I haven't met him yet. So, so what is it? He said, well, he said, Musk is a billionaire. He's not looking for more money. That's not his driver. 
his vision is to get every petrol fuel car off the road to save planet Earth, and that's why Tesla exists. And he said, I really connect with that vision. So we talk about, Josh Fegan talks about um, your purpose above your profit is the thing that changes your life. Yep. And when he said that, I thought, wow, that's very cool. And here's a young, very professional guy. To be honest, he could work anywhere he likes, really. He'd work in our industry, be one of the top agents, I think. And he's there because he followed the vision mm -hmm. of this incredible guy. And he said, I can tell you, Musk doesn't need another dollar to change his life. But before he dies, he wants to get every petrol car off the road. And I thought, wow, that made me even want to buy it again because that's kind of reinforcing a greater, not just a good experience, but a greater good of everyone that buys a Tesla is helping to achieve that goal of getting rid of petrol and carbon emissions. And by the way, just if you're serious about switching up cars or changing cars, it is the most incredible drive I've ever had. I'm not a car kind of guy. I, I don't, you know, some people are into cars a lot. I'm not really, but I've got to say, I've never felt a car that drives like that. And it's silent. It's like you're on a monorail. Yeah. And so you charge it up every night. Charge it overnight. It takes. You can get a quick charge in twenty or thirty minutes. But if you charge it overnight, it fills you up. You drive three to four hundred kilometres without needing another charge. Yeah, John, so how big is the charger? Like, what if you're? It's in, like a big power. What if you're in uh, Blue Mountains? You take it with you. They, no, no. Uh, they have. You, know, you have a connection in the back, but they have charging spots, and 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 your sat nav, which is spectacular, uh, in the car will tell you, you hit a button, it'll tell you where the nearest one is. So yeah. you're never gonna run out, really. You'd have to be pretty disorganized to run out. Um, and uh, it tells you, the interesting thing is your diary, you, you get in the car, and you know how now all cars have Bluetooth that syncs. You get in the car, it syncs with your diary, so it knows where you're going, and you just press your next appointment and it takes you there. You don't have to punch anything in the sat nav anymore, assuming you've put it in your diary, the address. So if I'm coming to News Limited and I put it there, it picks up my diary and I hit News Limited appointment and it just takes me there. It takes you there. Um, driverless car, like yeah. you don't need a driver, like obviously the driver. So already the car doesn't need a driver. He said he went to Canberra and never touched the steering wheel. So the interesting thing is like what's legal and what's illegal. Um, the, the law apparently tells you that you must be in control of the car at all times. And John, how much are those cars? 150 to 220, 220, 250, yeah. something like that. Right. But it is, it's the tip of the iceberg as well for the company. They're yeah. starting to do technology around solar panels, uh, the battery. So it's not just the vision of taking every petrol car off the road, it's lowering um, emissions worldwide. Well, well, the other thing is, you're exactly right, but you, you think about this cruise control thing. We all, well, probably we all have cruise control yeah. in our cars because most basic to better than basic cars have them nowadays. And that really does almost, or it does half of what the Tesla does. I mean, it certainly keeps you away from the car in front yep. and it keeps you kind of driving at a certain speed. Just a Tesla car can change lanes and stop and turn corners and other things. And a lot of cars nowadays have got auto parking. So between cruise control and auto parking, Tesla is the next iteration of that. But I was just amazed, and for principals and sales agents here, because sales agents are really principals in a lot of ways, it's about what is your purpose above profit? What, what is your why and why is it so important for people and customers? Because that, that when, when Will said that to me, I thought, wow, that's very cool. Mm. Well, that's, uh, I think Simon Sinek's uh, whole message is um, that inner circle, why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. Um, and um, I've got to say, uh, I had, is it just me, Troy? But Elon Musk has just, in the last two, three weeks, he's been um, like very much in, um, well, he has on the uh, agreement South with Australia, the South Australian the government, battery. the battery, yeah. Because yeah. all I can tell you is the night before MDA boot camp, which was the night of ARIC, um, one of the uh, the great agents from uh, Kay and Bird and a client of mine that was coming to boot camp, he said to me, uh, matey, listen, I know that you're staying on the Gold Coast. Um, I'm just letting you know if um, um, you pop down here, uh, Elon Musk is here. And I've got to tell you, I didn't know. <laughs> Who, who, he who, he, who, who he was. So I actually said to him, I said, mate, listen, just get him to come along to boot camp tomorrow. <laughs> and he goes, do you know who he is? He goes, he's having a bite to oh, eat I here, that. right? I love that. But um, guys... Right, he was up there for a reason. I can't think he was... It was the night of Eric, he, this call came in. Oh, yeah. He's, he was seeing a girl that was making a movie there. That's where I heard about that. Yeah, right. right. I think he's dating Johnny Depp's ex. 
Right. right. She was there on the Gold Coast making a movie, and he he flew up there because the, the guy the other day. This is a, this is a this is a magazine podcast. We've covered <laughs> yeah. social media. We've covered ego. We've covered Tesla. We're not talking about it. Everyone's zoned off by now. They yeah. all left ten minutes ago. This is <laughs> a good uh, pitch for the three well, people for that are Tesla, left watching Tesla, us. Tesla, they were pitching here for a sponsorship. <laughs> uh. Tesla should be sponsoring. But the other thing he said, no discounts. No discounts. Like Apple. Right. He said there's a there's a famous story. Uh, but it's believed to be true, but. Uh, Elon Musk's cousin apparently sent him a uh, email saying, "Look, I'm really interested in the Teslas. Well done. You know, I'd like to buy one. Can you put me onto the right person, and that'll do me a good deal?" And, and he just sent him a link to the website, and he said, "Find <laughs> basically find your own." But but I love the fact because that's what I love about Apple. I remember going into Apple one day because I wanted to kind of look at if we bought everyone an iPad and whatever, and, and you know, I said, "So what would the cost of 50 iPads be?" And they said. What's an iPad? Nine hundred dollars times fifty. <laughs> That's right. It speaks volumes for companies with a higher purpose. Because Compass, we all love Compass, and yeah. we know that they've come out with their new uh, campaign, which is helping everyone find their place in the world. And Tesla sounds like it's trying to achieve the same thing. So um, if you I, jump I saw onto that last Insta- night. Yeah, is that a campaign? I didn't realise. Well, it seems to become Did you all, say that all their marketing. I our saw it our last mission night. is to help everyone find their place in the world. That's exactly, it. and I just thought, you got it? Our mission is to fo- help people find their place in the world. Well, yeah, well, I got exactly the same. So it's, I got it's, their, it's their um, phrase that they seem to be using a lot, and it's not only that you mentioned the Tesla um, scenario with um, what they're trying to achieve as a higher purpose. I just think, it's very cool. you know, ties in with Josh, is what Josh was saying very as well. Cool. Guys and girls, thank you for your attention on camera, on sound, and... Um, realestate.com.au okay. thank you so much Very we talk good. about you know the media world's companies. greatest real estate website and it is Absolutely. i don't think there's anyone in the world that's done what rea has done and uh, i don't say that because i'm a director i say that because i believe it and uh, it's very exciting to see what they're doing at the moment not just here in australia but other parts of the world in asia i think as australia becomes more connected to asia mm. i think the presence that rea has in asia now will be incredibly valuable for all our customers going forward so we thank Tracy and the good whole team. team, all good people. Luke McPhee has now just changed. From I heard. Time. So you know Luke? He's the uh, general, yes I do. He's the uh, GM of uh, the offices for Matt and Jamie. He's going up there working with Matt he's, and Jamie. He's, he started, has he? Uh, I think next week. Yeah, yeah. I think right. literally they might be having a uh, sales conference. He's a very, ta- he's a very talented guy, and he brings along me. I think that experience. they were going to uh, announce it in about a week to our rehab, but everyone knows now. <laughs> no. Yeah, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> there goes our sponsorship. Go to seek.com, they'll help you out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you guys.